Now, have you any other Christian names, David? Yes, Haig. Haig? How do you spell that? H-A-I-G. H-A-I-G. Thank you. Now, this number I'm writing in here is your national insurance number. Make a note of it, David you? has just left Would school. And after this talk with the youth employment officer, he starts work tomorrow in a local factory. David did well at secondary modern school. And like many another bright youngster, he wasn't too keen on the idea of factory work. But the youth employment officer showed him that nowadays there are plenty of worthwhile openings in industry. And he's made up his mind to give it a try. Well, that's that. You mustn't forget that card tomorrow. Wonder what it'll really be like, though. Better wait and see. Don't miss this bus now, and don't be late tomorrow. It's going to be quite a day. David has passed this sweet factory often enough on his way to school. It doesn't look quite the same today, though. Now, which way are you supposed to go in? Better try this one. It's not surprising that David feels a bit lost and uncertain. From the world of desks and chalk into this one of men and machines is quite a step for any youngster to take. The doorkeeper seems a decent enough bloke anyway. What was it he said now? Along the corridor, second door from the end, ah, this must be it. David has arrived. The ice is broken. From now on, he will not be on his own. There are others starting work here this morning. Most of them are youngsters, though one is an older woman, Mrs. Leggett, who will be doing part-time work. Kevin did a technical course at school, and this will be his first day as a trainee mechanic. Eleanor is the new clerical assistant in the commercial office, opening the post and simple filing to begin with, but there'll be plenty of opportunities before long. Mary, talking to Mrs. Leggett, will be working in one of the big boiling rooms, helping to make the sweets, while young Bill will be delivering them. He's going to be a van boy. A typical bunch of youngsters, cheerful and keen to get on. But the first enthusiasm can soon wear off if they aren't made to feel at home or start by doing nothing but odd jobs. The tree bore management makes sure that this doesn't happen here. They want their young entrants to feel, right from the start, that they're really going to count in the organization. They get some of their top men to meet them and talk to them. Men like Mr. Kenyon. He doesn't think that the boss should be someone you only see to get a telling off for your cards. At the induction meeting, he talks to them about wages, hours, insurance, the profit sharing scheme. They listen carefully. This is interesting, bread and butter stuff, not just a pep talk. But David is thinking. Yes, all very nice. But what about the job? What's that going to be like? David will start his training here, in one of the big boiling rooms. Len Ashdown is the foreman in charge, 25 years with the firm, and there's not much he doesn't know about sweet manufacture. Len has a pretty caustic sense of humor, but he's easy enough to get on with if you are doing your job. Of course, there were none of these training schemes when he was a lad. It was a question of learn what you could, when you could. It will be very different for David. He'll get a full six months training, like young Ernie here, who's going to be a sugar boiler too. Jim Starling is explaining how the sugar mixed with glucose and water, is cooked under vacuum to keep its color. Pressure cooking in reverse, and on a grand scale, too. When the sugar is cooked, the machine automatically breaks the vacuum. Yes, machinery does a lot of the work, but men and skill are needed to get the best out of the machines. There are not many sugar boilers more skilled and experienced than Jim Starling, and he understands people as well as he knows his machines. That's why he was given this extra job of an instructor. David's early training will be in good hands here. But during his first months, David will learn more than just sugar boiling. Every stage of sweet making will be covered, including the work on the slabs with the hot sugar straight from the cooker. 
Most of this work is done by women and girls. Mixing in the color and flavor is the first thing to be done. These often change from day to day according to the demand. There's a big drive on sherbet lemons just now. Mary will be working here. She'll be one of a team of five, each on a different stage of the job. Of course, the slabs are kept warm, or the sugar would not stay pliable for long. With color, flavor, and acid added, the sugar is passed on to the molder, whose job is to work the mass into a smooth, even texture, with the color and flavor really evenly distributed. It's cause for skill and judgment if you're to get fine quality sweets. But that doesn't mean there's no chance for a chat and a joke on the job. Mary will find that the girls are keen on their work, but they make the factory a lively place to work in. After molding, the sugar is often pulled mechanically on the arms of this machine. It will give the sweets an extra satiny finish. You will notice how well guarded the machine is. Sheila has been with the firm for some years, and she can appreciate the importance of their strict safety precautions. Of course, each member of the team doesn't stay permanently on one job. Mary will get the chance of working on each of the stages, and she will get a proper training for it too. The beginner today has a better chance than ever before of learning the right way. Each scheme of training is carefully planned by the training division, and the men in charge keep in close personal touch to see how they work out in practice on the factory floor. All the ingredients have been carefully blended in, and the batch roller can now change the bulk raw material into the finished product. You could almost call it the backbone of the industry, for it draws out the sugar from a mass to a roll, and from a roll to a thick thread, before cutting it up into separate sweets. Cleanliness and purity must be the constant watchword in a food factory. Here, any foreign body is instantly detected by the magic eye, a photoelectric cell. The machine stops, and the affected part is sent to the laboratory. Small, but well equipped, and with a qualified chemist in charge, the laboratory safeguards quality standards. For girls with a grammar school background, here is a job which is varied, interesting, and important. They test everything here from the keeping qualities of coloring to the moisture content of wrapping papers. The one in the middle is a gold foil used for wrapping toffees. There is a team of five girls on this machine which makes, wraps and packages the toffees. They must see that the flow of production is smooth and unbroken. The work is typical of many of the jobs in this highly mechanized factory. Each job is graded according to skill and responsibility. This kind of work appeals to many girls. It's clean and light. It's usually the sort of job you can sit down to, and it has a rhythm which leaves you free for a chat with a neighbor. There are other advantages too, good welfare facilities and a dowry scheme, for example. And you can get on if you've a mind. You can get promoted to a higher grade with more pay, while a really ambitious youngster can finish up as a supervisor or forewoman. Dolly Anderson started off by helping to look after one machine, and now she's responsible for more than 30 of them, and the tremendous volume of production which flows through this large wrapping room every day. A hundred and sixty sweets wrapped by each machine every minute. Machines need a rest and attention. 
Young Kevin, our training mechanic, will be mainly working on these wrapping machines. Minor faults can be put right on the spot, but for the bigger overhauls, the machine is taken down to the engineer's workshop. The men in charge of the engineering department hold a key position. It's not just a question of keeping the wheels turning. This is a highly competitive industry. Production methods must be constantly improved, layouts rearranged, new and better machines installed. And what a variety of machines there are in the business of making sweets. They do almost everything, from sealing the tops of polythene bags to making the twist in a barley stick. Machines for mixing, machines for molding, machines for shaping, machines for wrapping. All day, every day, these restless, insatiable machines must be fed. Some of the workers are part-time. The machines are always busy. Machines can do much, but there are some things that only human hands can do, like making bullseyes, for instance. Bullseyes, as every schoolboy knows, are black and white striped sweets with a twist in them, and no machine can make them. There's years of experience here, and the skill that goes with them. This is real teamwork, with each one knowing exactly what to do next. The slab is warmed, but they must work fast before the sugar gets too stiff. Cleanliness is vital, of course, and both Sheila and Flo wear clean gloves. Every care must be taken to see that anyone who comes into contact with food has perfectly clean hands. Most of the girls do wear special gloves, but sometimes the type of work makes this impossible, and in these cases, the regular hand inspections carried out by the welfare staff are an added safeguard. The factory, too, is kept scrupulously clean, and once a week there is a full-scale cleaning down when the machines, as well, get special attention. But what could be more important than the cleanliness and the brightness and the sparkle of those familiar jars that line the shelves of the corner sweet shop? This machine washes, sterilizes and dries them. When the jars have gone through this machine, they're ready to be filled again and begin their journey back to the customer. Bill, our new van boy, will work here on the loading bank for a few weeks before he goes out with a driver. He'll help to load and check the outward bound goods and get a good grasp of the way the system works. There's no time to relax during the peak loading periods. Within the hour, these lorries will be on the road and others will take their places at the bank. The loading of a six-ton van has to be carefully worked out. 
there may be a dozen or more consignments in one load. The route, too, has been carefully planned, but if any snags do arise, they can be smoothed out by the journey planning office. Mr. Bryant's job is no sinecure. There's quite a big transport fleet based on the London factory, and the job of routing them over the whole of central and southern England gives him plenty of tricky problems. But he's been a driver himself, and he can speak from practical experience. You shouldn't have any trouble that first day's run. You've got to drop at Reading and then down the A23 for the load With the route details settled and the loading completed, van 35 is ready for the road. It's a long two-day journey with over 20 deliveries, but the driver has had plenty of experience. Bill Hahn has been driving these vans for nearly 20 years, and his van boy Keith, who has just completed six months with the firm, has learnt a lot from him. In a few years' time, Keith will have the chance of becoming a driver himself. This is no blind alley job. There are real opportunities for the right youngster. Deliveries are made from London to nearly every town south of a line from Bristol to the Wash, while at Chesterfield in North Derbyshire is the base for another transport fleet. Lorries from Chesterfield serve the north of England and deliveries are made as far north as Aberdeen in Scotland. This transport network serves the home market, but the firm has a growing export trade. British sweets are becoming popular in an ever-increasing number of countries, and the export warehouse at Woodford in Essex handles the crating and dispatch of a steady flow of overseas orders. The transport fleet not only delivers the orders, it helps to get them as well. Mobile showrooms carrying displays of the whole range of Trebor products tour country areas. This helps the more isolated retailer to keep in touch with the latest lines. For the driver of the mobile showroom, it can mean eventual promotion to a sales representative. This is valuable experience in customer relations. Yes, well, we think they're better value without a hole. And the customer does too. They're selling very well abroad at the minute. Yeah, that's the mobile that's showrooms do a good job in supplementing the work of a team of sales representatives. Mr. Terry is still getting to know the wholesalers and retailers in his territory. It's only three weeks since he arrived here in the North Midlands after a period of training in the South. But he's made a good start and now it's back to Chesterfield with a book full of orders. Mrs. Robertson is the order office controller here in Chesterfield. In a short while, 150 miles to the south, young Eleanor will begin her first duties as a clerical assistant in the London office. Mrs. Robertson's responsible position is not an exception. It is typical of the promotion possibilities for the ambitious girl. 
Janet here has been with the firm for only three years, but already she is in charge of the Chesterfield Accounts Office. In the offices here and in London, many of the girls are engaged in general clerical work, but there is also the chance to specialise, perhaps on one of the wide variety of office machines. Accounting machines are used extensively in Janet's department. By means of the teleprint machine, a steady stream of information is exchanged between Chesterfield and the various London departments, in particular with head office at Ilford. Details of orders, queries on accounts, transport requirements, personnel problems, they all tap their way through the teleprint system. The success of any commercial organisation depends heavily on rapid and efficient communication. Good management on the production side must be matched by efficiency in office and typing pool, and the girls at the Ilford offices set themselves high standards. No less than on the factory floor, mechanisation has become the rule in the modern office. Some of the girls are qualified stenographers, and many do responsible and confidential work. Marigold is the managing director's secretary, and she is taking notes at a manager's meeting at which her chief is presiding. Still an active and very much respected member is Mr. Robertson, who started it all over 50 years ago. It must sometimes seem incredible to him that a business which began in a private house in a street in Forest Gate should have grown into the large and complex organisation which it is today. The managers see to it that the plans of the various departments are kept in step. All the department heads are represented. Miss Clark is one of them. When she left Napier Elementary School in East Ham, her first job was with Trebors as an assistant in the chocolate department. Today, she is the head of the whole of the Chesterville division of the firm. Miss Clark has plenty of high-level problems to deal with, but she finds time, makes time, to see that her employees are contented and that the problems of personnel are being coped with by supervisors. Health and welfare are very much the factory's concern today. Shortcomings in the product can often be traced directly back to the worries of the girl who made it. Welfare staff can do as much good smoothing out some personal problem as by treating a cut finger. Miss Clark values her welfare staff, but she likes to know her employees personally, especially the young people. She understands their needs and their importance. Her knowledge of people is as important to the managers as the chief engineer's knowledge of machines. They know that the success of a firm depends on the people who work in it, and its future on the young people, on these young people and others like them. The induction meeting is over now and soon they will be really starting their first day in their first job. In office or boiling room, workshop or loading bay, it will be an exciting day. They may not become managers or directors, but everyone will get the chance to prove his ability. David is feeling more at home now. He need not worry. He will always find a helping hand. Here, he has a future in the making.